My entitled manager fires me before I'm able to quit, so I uncover all of her dirty secrets as revenge, and as a result, her entire life is falling apart, forcing her to get fired, causing her husband to divorce her, while also making it so she was living out of her car for quite some time. And I've never been more satisfied to see karma do its work. Here's what happened. Since I'm still in school, I took a job at a bakery of types, which I won't name. The place has bread in the name, but also sells overpriced salads and sandwiches. I think you can figure it out from there. I worked there for close to a year, where I had this boss by the name of Betty. Betty is not her real name. Betty and I just didn't get along whatsoever. She had gotten the previous general manager to quit because she had an affair with him, and she threatened to tell his wife if he didn't leave. He quickly left the job, and she was promoted to the position. I didn't like her, but I have to respect the dedication to be the general manager of a small store. When I first started working there, I was respectful, but she would do things that would get on my nerves. For instance, I would clean all the places I would be hired to do, and once I was done and relaxed, for maybe five minutes, she would run out of the manager's office and start screeching at me. She would say, why aren't you working? I would tell her, of course, I just did my job, and as a cashier, if nobody is there to help, then I didn't have anything to do. She would glare at me, and then would supposedly accidentally drop an entire pot of brewed coffee onto my freshly mopped floor, just for me to then have to clean it up. So I learned quickly to always look busy. Once she realized I was going to kneel and kiss the ground that she walked on, she started dropping my hours. The store ran on Game of Thrones type politics for who got promoted and who got a raise. Somehow all of her friends were managers and would bully the rest of the staff. She was barely at work too, by the way. She would drive to my job, clock in just in case corporate decided to check on her hours. So basically, she was essentially stealing hours. When you clock in, it printed out a small piece of paper telling you when you clocked in. She would just drop them on the floor for me to clean up. I would usually pick them up and stick them into my pocket. So this led to me finding Betty clock in and clock out stubs in my pockets in my house. This will be important later. Did I also mention she was super racist? She was white and most of the staff were my fellow high school peers who were mostly people of color. One day at work she walked out and told us, when you're on the clock I own you. When we all reacted to look at her, she backpedaled and was like, I didn't mean it like that. And this will also be important later, by the way. So after a while, I got sick of practically begging for hours. So I went to my current job, but decided I merely wanted to drop my hours, which were already barely a day a week. But suddenly when I got my new job, she scheduled me for every single day of an entire week. She never did that, even when we were on semi good terms. So I obviously told her I had a new job and I couldn't do this. After that, I went home and called my friend who was still working there to tell him that I was going to quit tomorrow. Now he has a bad habit of putting his phone on speakerphone when he's cleaning at work. So Betty overheard this, obviously. The next day, I walk in and I go through the respectful motions of saying, thank you for the opportunity and all this other stuff. Betty let me get through the entire speech before she said, oh yeah, I was meaning to tell you, you're fired. I was so blindsided and upset that I cussed her out. My mom raised me to treat women with respect, but this overweight, hippo-looking jerk absolutely in enraged me. She's the type of girl to think binge eating was a personality trait. So I left and was mad about being fired before I quit, but didn't push the issue any further. I'm only 18 and I already had another job. I wasn't expecting Betty to give me a good reference anyways. I would have completely left it alone if it wasn't for the district manager by the name of Ben, who ended up texting me. Ben is not his real name. Now he thought I was still working there, so I explained to him that I was fired. And when he found out about this, he was stunned. Due to the fact that I was a decent employee. He asked why she let me go and I explained it to him and he was absolutely furious. And then he clarified that she fired me before I quit and I said yes. He was so mad that she did this and asked if there was anything else she might have done. I kind of just vented to him for a little bit and when I told him about the racist remarks he asked if anyone else would collaborate with me. I forgot to mention that she slowly fired and forced people to quit and replaced them with her friends and family, which according to company policy, she could not do that. Something about conflict of interest or something like that. I asked all the people who were working that day if they could do this with me, and a few of them said that they would, but one of them did even better. My one co-worker is convinced that he's the next big vlogger, so he always has his phone out or just uses audio recordings for hours for a chance to catch a funny clip that might have happened at work. I've watched his content and let me say it is just super cringe, but it turns out he labels each recording by the day and the time. 
times. So when he checked, he found her making racist remarks on his phone. I then got the brilliant idea with my other friend or co-workers who got fired, and we decided to scour my vlogging friend's recordings. We found some great moments of Betty saying controversial things or just straight up being nasty. Like one time, a guest sneezed on the baked pastries, and when a co-worker told her, she laughed it off and said nobody would know. But this wasn't enough for me. I tried to avoid conflict, but when I'm in a situation, I'll follow it through. I looked her up on Facebook, and I found out that she was married. Nobody knew this. So when she had the affair with the other manager and basically blackmailed him, she was also married and basically cheating. I don't think anyone ever cared enough to find out, but she was a nasty old lady. So I found the old manager's Facebook page, and I found out he and his wife were separated. It turns out, even after he quit, Betty was still trying to blackmail money out of him. And when he didn't, she told his wife anyways, causing his wife to divorce him and basically leave him, forcing him to go live with his parents. I did some research and in my state, blackmail and extortion is a third degree penalty, which has a maximum of seven years in prison with a fine over $10,000 to the victim. So I told my old manager what my plan was for her. He agreed to call the cops on her, but I asked if he'd wait until I finished my part first. He said he'd give me a week. So I met with the district manager and showed him all of our evidence, the recordings and the written statements from the other ex-co-workers and people who were still working there. I also gave Ben the slips of paper as to when Betty would clock in and out and how she would just leave for like 8 to 10 hours at a time and then come back to work. Ben thanked me for the information and then I left. A few days later, while walking past the store, I noticed it was closed in the middle of the day. I texted a guy who still worked there and he told me everything. It turns out, Ben first checked the security cameras to see if she was there for the full time she claimed to be. And surprise, surprise, she absolutely wasn't. So Ben decided to investigate the store's expenses since if she's lying about her time, what else could she possibly be stealing? He found out she was stealing money from the store. Now, the guy didn't fully explain how she was doing this, but just says that it was happening. It turns out she was breaking a lot of health and safety codes and used the money for repairs and all this other stuff for herself specifically. So she was fired immediately along with all of her minions and left barely anybody to run the store. They shut down to clean up the store and fix things that she didn't make. So she's out of a job and the guy she blackmailed told Betty's husband with photo proof that she cheated on him. So Betty's husband flips out and decides to divorce her. And you can bet that Betty is the type to post everything going on on Facebook. So she's begging someone to let her stay, but all of her friends and family totally bailed on her. So she was living in her car looking for a job. And that's when the guy she blackmailed decided to sue her for extortion. So she scrambles to find a lawyer. And to make it even worse, the company decided to sue her for all the money she stole, plus all the repairs and lost revenue while the store is closed. Betty's life is absolute garbage. She had to sell her car for drastically under what it was worth just to pay for all the legal trouble. The guy she blackmailed told me in bits and pieces of her crying in the courtroom, but not too much after that. I was never super close to him, to be honest. The last I heard of Betty is that she is still living with her sister who definitely hates her. And to think that she could have avoided all of this if she just let me quit instead of firing me before I could finish. Man, this Betty lady truly was corrupt. I mean, look at the way she was acting. She treated her employees like garbage. She was generally just an awful person. She blackmailed a guy that she had spent some quality time with. And she was stealing from the store and doing all these horrible things. Not to mention the gross health code violations. Like seriously, you let someone sneeze on your products and give it out to people anyways? You are seriously a horrible person if you do that. I mean, I'm surprised that the original poster stuck around with that job as long as they did. This person just sounds absolutely awful. I can't imagine working in that kind of environment and trying to make ends meet in my life. So good for the original poster for doing what needs to get done and basically sabotaging this lady's life. Because it sounds like she absolutely deserved it and everything that came her way was of her own doing. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. My mom has been disinvited from my wedding after she continually asked me to take my stepfather in and allow him at my wedding. And now I'm seriously unsure of what to do. So to start things out, this is a throwaway account because my cousin knows my regular account. My fiance and I are getting married soon and my mother has been getting more and more irritating by bringing up my stepfather who is not invited. My biological father was verbally and physically awful to me. And when my mother left him when I was about eight years old, she began 
dating and married my stepfather. My stepfather does seem to love my mother and vaguely like my brothers, but he absolutely hates me. He was often very verbally awful to me as well, and on more than one occasion, it became physical as well. He was never a positive figure in my life, and since moving out, I have never spoken to him and avoided visiting my mother due to him, and also because I basically resent her inaction. As such, he was not invited to our wedding, and my fiancé and I have made it very clear to my mother that she is not allowed to bring him to the wedding or to any of our events. However, since receiving the invitation, she has not once refrained from mentioning him when we've spoken, and she's insisted upon talking to me more often than normal. Usually, she doesn't mention him unless there's some kind of major event happening, but now she will talk about him endlessly, and this is all between asking me how my wedding planning is going and all this other stuff. She has also asked over the phone if she could take him to the wedding on three separate occasions, and she has also asked if he could attend the rehearsal dinner on two separate occasions. Two days ago, my fiancé and I were invited to a family dinner just to celebrate my nephew's high school and my niece's kindergarten graduation, and this is where my mother and stepfather were present. Once the kids were sent to bed, the conversation turned towards our wedding. My mother decided to express to everyone that she was terribly upset that my stepfather was not invited, and given that he was quiet now, he should be invited because it is apparently not completely impossible for him to entirely shut up. I was not happy about her bringing this up in front of everyone, or at all for that matter, so I snapped at her. I told her that I had been clear that I did not want to hear it, and I wasn't going to change my mind, and I told her that because she couldn't respect my wishes, she was no longer invited to my wedding. She immediately started crying, and my stepfather started swearing at me. She then told me that I was cruel to not let her go, because I'm her son, and she's done all these things for me. I then told her that she didn't seem too concerned with all of that when my stepfather was denigrating me and telling me I wasn't worth anything as a person, all while I was still a child. But this didn't stop her from whining nonetheless. My fiancé and I left after that. Aside from my fiancé, who very clearly supports me and has been an absolute angel with this, every other family member has said that I was being a jerk. So should I apologize for the way I spoke to her in front of other people? Should I reinstate her invitation? How can I work through some of this animosity? What should I do? First and foremost, no, you are not the jerk, and no, you didn't do anything wrong. If your mom wants to make this public, well then guess what? We can make this argument public. You have told her on multiple occasions over the phone that no, he cannot be there. And now when you're right in front of a bunch of other people, your mom tried to pull a power play and publicly humiliate you to try and force you to get your stepfather in your wedding. And personally, I don't blame you for a second for putting her in her place and saying no, that's not going to happen. Your stepfather was awful to you growing up. He is clearly not a good person, and your mom is just as complicit in this issue, since she did nothing to stop him when you were a child. You don't owe her or your stepfather a thing, and if she wants to step over your boundaries repeatedly and not take no for an answer, then this, in my opinion, might be the only way to get her to stop. Because in my opinion, if she is let back into the wedding, you can bet that she's going to bring your stepfather with her, and then try to guilt trip you at the wedding to let him in. Like, clearly she's willing to do this in public. You really think she she wouldn't do this at your wedding. So in my opinion, I don't think you made a wrong decision. The rest of the family can go kick some sand. They don't know the extent that your mom has gone to just to try and make your stepfather a part of your wedding. And considering his past history, I don't blame you in the slightest for not wanting him involved. An entitled Karen tries to preach and proselytize to my child. And even after I corrected her and told her not to do that, she continued to try and test my patience. So I put her in her place in a spectacular fashion. Here's what happened. So my eldest is having a play date with a friend and her mom comes to pick her up. I'm in my bedroom with Streetlight Manifesto playing and my boyfriend is watching the kids. He comes to get me saying Mommy Dearest wants to talk to me about my music and rolls his eyes. So I go and she immediately starts to say, you let your children listen to such blasphemy. But I tell her that it's not really blasphemy if we don't really believe in God to begin with. She then gets so outraged that we need to see the light. So I snap back at her and I say, leave my house immediately or I will have my boyfriend assist you and finding your way to the exit. So I send her an email the next morning. Hi, this is the original poster from yesterday. I'm very concerned about your insistence on preaching to my children, and I do not appreciate you insulting me and my children, especially not in front of my child. I would very much like you to keep your religion to yourself and your family. If you find what you need in your God, that is wonderful for you. And I'm truly happy for you, but we do not share your beliefs, and very much do not want you pushing your beliefs on us, and especially not our children, who do not yes possess possess the critical faculties to understand such difficult concepts. As a courtesy, I will refrain from playing atheist
atheistic music while your child is over. I got a message back from this lady, and she said to me, I'm very sorry for my attitude the other day. My mother's currently in the hospital, and I wasn't having a great day. I understand that you have a difference of beliefs, and I will respect that in the future. Thank you for coming to me instead of just attacking me. So I think that it's settled, and I let my daughter go to her play date, despite my boyfriend wanting to chaperone. And honestly, I should have let him. When I pick up my child, we start driving home, and I ask what they did, and if she had fun. And she says, we watched a movie about Jesus. Luckily, my child already knows about Christianity, and that they have their beliefs, but we, meaning mommy and daddy, do not share those beliefs. And now I'm stuck trying to figure out how I'm going to answer all these questions that my five-year-old is going to have. I was honestly hoping I could put this conversation off until she was a little bit older so she could understand where I was coming from. Because honestly, I don't have any real issues with Christians or Christianity that are based in their logical failings of their arguments for the existence of God. I became an atheist because I studied philosophy. So I sent another email to this lady. I say to her, Hi there, please explain to me why you thought it was appropriate after our last conversation to proselytize to my child. This lady then responded by saying, I'm sorry, I figured you wouldn't mind giving you a spouse the virtues of atheism in your home that I at least provide a counter to your blasphemy. Children should be allowed to decide whichever path they wish on their own. I respond to this lady by saying, thank you so much for responding. I will no longer be letting my child over to your house unsupervised and your child is no longer welcome over at ours unsupervised. I will be taking further action as necessary through the school. Any further correspondence can go through my boyfriend as frankly, you don't want my patients to run any thinner than it already is. His contact information will be attached. And after that, we haven't heard back. And hopefully, I never do. Honestly, when it comes to other people's kids, you need to respect the parents' wishes. It doesn't matter what the subject is. And it also doesn't matter that the original poster is atheist. If they didn't want their kid being proselytized to, regardless of the religion, then guess what? You need to respect those wishes, even if you disagree with them. I'm personally of the camp that you know what? People can believe or not believe whatever they want. And if they disagree with me, then that's fine. But the last thing I'm going to do is try to push my own beliefs on someone else's kids, even if it is in some kind of covert way, like the way this other lady was doing it. She shared that movie and she knew exactly what she was doing. And that was highly inappropriate given the conversation that already happened previously. Like talk about being incredibly disrespectful and so unbelievably rude. So good for the original poster for putting this lady in her place. She was completely out of line with your wishes and I don't blame you for reacting in the way that you did. Am I the jerk for not telling my wife that I drove five hours to my sister's wedding with my ex also in the car? Here's what happened. So to start things out, my sister got married one month ago. My ex was at the wedding because she's my sister's best friend. My wife couldn't come because her mom was at the hospital and she wanted to be near if anything bad happened. I obviously asked her if she was okay with me going alone and she said that she was. The wedding was a five hour drive and I didn't want to drive on my own for that long. So my sister suggested that I drive with my ex because in her case, she had no ride to the wedding. So I agreed but I didn't tell my wife because I knew she was already stressed about her mom and I didn't want to add on to that. However, my mom accidentally let the information slip in a conversation about my sister's wedding. My wife didn't say anything in front of my family but I could tell that she was very mad. When we got in the car, she immediately asked me why I didn't tell her and I said I didn't want to stress her more than she already was about her mom and it wasn't a big deal. It isn't like we attended the wedding together. She drove in the same car to the avenue. She didn't accept my excuse and said I should have informed her regardless of what was happening with her mom and she felt incredibly betrayed. I told her she had no real reason to feel betrayed because it's not like anything more than just driving happened between us. She still said that I'm a jerk for not letting her know and for not making sure that she would be okay with it. My friends are understanding of both sides but I'm honestly at a loss. So am I the jerk for not telling my wife that I drove to my sister's wedding with my ex also in the car? Honestly, yeah, you are definitely the jerk in this situation. You decided not to tell her even though you knew this would make her uncomfortable. I mean, seriously, that is not a good move. Like, even if you didn't cheat on your ex-girlfriend, this really did make you seem very untrustworthy. And there really is no good excuse. And it's awful that the original poster is like, oh, I didn't want to drive alone. Like, are you serious right now? You are literally an adult and you're going to your sister's wedding. Trying to justify your ex coming along with you all because you didn't want to drive alone is the weakest excuse I've ever heard in my life. If you really cared about your wife, you would have said something. You would have said, hey, my ex wants to ride with me and that's the only way I can get to the wedding and feel comfortable with it. And then you could have had a conversation about it. 
it. If anything, your mom was probably helping your wife out. She probably saw exactly what was going on, and I'm willing to bet that this accidental slip up was definitely on purpose. She probably wanted your wife to know exactly what went on, because what you did is really inappropriate, and it really is a big deal. So hopefully you can see where you went wrong, and hopefully you can find forgiveness from your wife. Because honestly, based on what you've described, she has every reason to be upset, and you absolutely, in my opinion, are completely in the wrong. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.